Happy New Year! It's Dina coming at you from Cartersville, Georgia um, with a long overdue update. I think I last podcast the beginning of November and then just like everyone else, you've got the holidays, um, family, traveling, um, just really haven't stitched a whole lot. Um, now we're, you know, a couple weeks into January and life is settling down, so I thought I'd give you a quick update on um, on the few things that I have been working on um, and share with you a tip on how I um, organize and refer back to my over dyed flosses. Okay, so one of the projects that I am working on this year is called um, A Man a Month by Amy Bruken Designs. And um, so this is 12 different little snowmen, and each snowman is decorated by the month. So this is January's. And um, you get little buttons and little beads with, oh, don't, don't let you see the pattern. You get buttons and beads with this. Uh, it's the cute as can be. And so I am working it on this green, very rustic um, fabric. It's it's a large count, like maybe 16 count or something like that. Um, and so the middle of it says all flakes welcome and then you have six snowmen on top and six snowmen on the bottom. Um, and I keep this downstairs in my husband's bar area so when we're down there watching football um, this is what I am working on. Um, but I thought I would share with you how I reference my over dyed flosses because I'm not using any of the recommended flosses on this. So I have lots of over dyed flosses and you know a pattern might say you know to use Gentle Arts Sarsaparilla and I don't have that. And so trying to come up with a way to use what I have um, and make some substitutions I, I had to think through this. And so let me share with you my process. So I keep all my floss in these bags um, I think I got a thousand of them on Amazon for 10 bucks. So to me, they're cheaper than the Ziploc snack bags. They're sturdier. Um, and then I just stick an index card in them, um, tight or, um, handwrite the, um, the label on there. And then these are stacked up in a drawer. My DMCs are numerical and then my over dyes go by the vendor. So all my weak dye works are together alphabetically by the name. Okay, so here's how I organize my flosses by these and then I have holes punched, you know, when I use it and then I put it on a ring. And so, so this is um, one thing that I've got. Another thing that I use a lot is my DMC book with all of the colors. And here, this is the old version. I don't even know if they've come out with a new one. Um, since then. But what I do is I take my over dies and I figure out out of all of these columns in this book, all 20 something, which column do these colors fit in best with? And they fit in, to me they fit in best with the colors here in column 11. And so once I figure that out, then I go to my trusty little black book. And this little black book has everything. My favorite knitting patterns are some cleaners that I use. But in here, I've got each DMC page. Uh, each DMC column is referenced. So this is my DMC 11 column, and I described that as olive and mustard green colors. And here are all of the over dyes that I have that seem to fit into that category. So when I held it up, all of those seem to, to match that. So then if I'm stitching something that calls for a DMC, let's say that it calls for a DMC 372. Well, that's right here in this column. And so if I want to substitute an over dyed, I just go look in my little black book at DMC 11 and see which over dyes I have. I pull them out and then I might have one that I think is a, is a nice substitute. So I'm finding myself um, purchasing less over dies. I am just making do with what I have, um, which saves me more money for whatever else I want to spend it on. So I wanted to share that with you um, if you're trying to figure out a way to organize your flosses and how to use what you currently have. 
Um, the other thing I've been working on, this is my New Year's Eve start, was a map of Hawk Run Hollow. And I'm really proud of myself because um, this is the first one where I have decided to make major changes to it. Well, not major. I'm, what I've decided to do is um, just customize it to my little town that I live in. Because I live right near a lake and a river and we have hawks flying overhead all the time. So um, I've already figured out this is going to be my house right here. I'm going to change the colors of it to match my house. And then this is my neighbor's house. I'm going to change the colors of it slightly. And um, I'm changing the names of everything based on my little town. So I've done some of it. I went mad crazy last weekend working on this. And so there you go. I've done Cartersville, Georgia um, and Red Top Mountain. I live right at the base of Red Top Mountain. So I'm working on that. And so some of the things might have to shift around a little bit. Um, based on the lengths of the names, etc. Um, but it's been fun. It's been really mathematical, and you guys know I love my math. Um, so trying to figure out spacing and, and having to come up with my own letters if, if I couldn't find one um, that seemed to match. But, you know, I just pretty much looked at, at how they did the lettering here, and if I, I couldn't find a lettering that I liked there, then I flipped that over to the other side, and then zoomed in on some of these because it's very similar throughout um so so yeah so that's that's been fun um need to need to get busy on it um and like i said this can be a very very quick update um and then this i have to show you share this with you because i love it um it's not stitchy related it's sewing related so it's this little bag and this cute uh, free pattern online um, and um, love the little foxes easy to stitch um, and it's fully lined and so this is um, this is my knit project that I'm currently working on too um, so anyway that's about it um, haven't really acquired much in my stash this is the only thing that I've um, really gotten recently and this is from Shepherd's Bush um, long may ye, long may you wave, and I liked it because it has my two loves. It has my knitting and stitching together. So, um, so yeah, I bought this in when I was in Pigeon Forge in November. Um, a little bit pricey, however, it's the pattern and the fabric and the beads and the buttons and the flosses. So I'm like, you know, that was my only thing I bought when I was in Pigeon Forge. So, um, so not too bad. So, um, yeah, I will update when I can. Um, I'm really just trying to focus on those two, my, my map of um, Cartersville instead of map of Hawk Run Hollow and my Man Among Clubs. So, um, so yeah, so happy stitching. Uh, hope, you, hope you guys are well. And um, this is my first attempt at a video on my surface my I, my uh, macbook died and so um we'll see how this goes all right take care bye